This is Dr. Stephen Kajikian of the Black Hills Regional Eye Institute, and this is a video of a partial corneal transplant. The transplant is called a DMEC for decimase membrane endothelial transplant, and really what we're doing here is we are transplanting the innermost layer of the cornea. The innermost layer of the cornea has a uh, layer of cells that function to keep the cornea thin and keep it clear and when those cells start to malfunction then they require a corneal transplant. We start by uh, marking the cornea, the central eight millimeters, and then we make our side port incisions. We identify those uh, with a gentian violet purple marking pen. We make three side port incisions and then we make one larger 20 gauge incision with an MVR blade to place our anterior chamber maintainer. I didn't originally begin doing the surgery with an anterior chamber maintainer, uh, but I found that it's nice to use to have some additional fluid. In the anterior chamber to keep it deep. Once the anterior chamber maintainer is in place and all the side port incisions have been created, we use a reverse Sinsky hook to score the endothelium. We score it along the eight millimeter mark internally. And then in this case, the endothelial tissue that we are removing is quite thick. And so once it's scored and we begin to scrape it, you'll be able to see the edge come away from the internal part of the cornea. And there it is. It's very thick. It's a little bit hazy. Normal endothelial tissue uh, shouldn't have that appearance. It should be thin and it should be clear. Once the endothelial tissue uh, has been completely freed from the posterior corneal surface it is removed. There you can see we've got a scroll of that endothelial tissue because once it comes off the innermost part of the cornea, it tends to scroll up almost like a poster. When we place the new tissue, you'll see it behaves similarly. It's, it's in a scroll, although the scroll for the healthier tissue tends to be a much tighter, smaller scroll. We then begin our main incision into the anterior chamber. That's a three millimeter uh, keratome incision. And we use that incision to remove the, the scroll of endothelium from inside the eye. And once the scroll has been removed, and sometimes it's a little hard to, to grasp, but once the scroll has been removed, we then will use a tripan blue dye to uh, stain the internal portion of the cornea to identify any pieces of endothelium uh, that may be uh, remaining. We want to create uh, a really centrally clear area free from all the old tissue so that there is a nice clean space for the new tissue to be planted, transplanted, and so that it can heal properly. There's the tripan blue dye. We are injecting that into the anterior chamber, then we'll wash it out here momentarily, and we will look for any uh, flakes of remaining endothelial tissue that need to be removed. If you leave those uh, little tags behind, they really do tend to uh, reduce the adherence of the new tissue once it's implanted.
Okay, and there's just a little tag uh, of tissue right there that we're going to remove and look for any others. And we don't see any uh, at this point. The next step is then to bring the pupil down. We use a myocall to myose the pupil or constrict the pupil. And the reason for that is that once we put our new graft or new endothelial tissue in, in place, we don't want it to be able to go anywhere except the front of the eye. And if the pupil is large, then sometimes the graft can uh, slip behind the pupil and become uh, difficult to manage. Now that the pupil's small, we're ready for our graft implantation. Now we prepare the graft uh, off camera and you'll see well, when we inject it, it's injected as a scroll of tissue similar to the one we removed, except the scroll of tissue in this case will be a stained a blue, a dark blue, so that it can be more easily seen. And it will also be a smaller, tighter scroll, uh, which sometimes can be difficult to unroll. The reason that the scroll is smaller and tighter is because the endothelial cells, those internal corneal cells, are much, much healthier uh, than the ones we removed. So the scroll uh, tends to be somewhat tighter. Now that we've got our new tissue prepared, uh, we'll first use uh, scissors to create an inferior uh, iridotomy. That's an opening in the iris. That opening in the iris is used to ensure that fluid can flow from the posterior part of the eye to the anterior part of the eye. Without that opening, uh, when we place the graft and put an air bubble in the eye, uh, fluid has uh, trouble flowing in its natural direction and the eye pressure uh, can get quite a bit higher. There's the injector there. We're going to use uh, forceps to lift the mouth of the incision or the opening of the main incision. And then the scroll of tissue will be placed into the eye. So there's the forceps looking, there's the injector. Now there is the new tissue, stained blue and a tighter scroll, like we mentioned. It's injected into the eye, we take the anterior chamber, maintain her out, and we pull out the injector. And now we've got a scroll of tissue fresh tissue, new tissue, healthy tissue in the anterior chamber. Next step is that we close our incision. If the incision isn't closed tightly, then as we manipulate the new healthy tissue into the eye, it will tend to, it will tend to escape uh, through the incision as you manipulate the tissue and then the tissue will be lost. So you really have to place a suture immediately and tighten up the wound then you can deepen the anterior chamber so the new tissue isn't uh, sandwiched and then you tie your suture and then once the suture is tightened and the wound is watertight then you can start to manipulate that new tissue in the eye without uh, fearing that it will escape uh, through that larger incision. So here we are uh, grasping uh, the tails of our suture and tying it. Uh, you want to tie it tight enough so that uh, fluid and the, the graft are not going to escape, but you don't want to tie it too tight that you create a significant amount of astigmatism. Sometimes you need to reinflate uh, the eye or the anterior chamber to determine what the most appropriate amount of uh, suture tension is. Once we've got that suture tied appropriately, the ends are, are cut, and then we can start to manipulate the graft inside the eye. Okay, it's always important to try and maintain appropriate anterior chamber depth so that the new graft that has just been placed isn't squished between the iris and the cornea. Now that the suture has been tied, 
and buried, we will begin by using uh, bursts of uh, saline solution into the anterior chamber to manipulate the new scrolled tissue. Uh, the goal here is to get the scrolled tissue um, right side up, in other words, not upside down. And so we try and get it into a dual scroll configuration where there's a, a scrolls uh, coming into the center from each end so that we can identify uh, the orientation of the tissue. I tend to prep my own tissue and I do not um, mark uh, the tissue in any way so that the greatest number of endothelial cells are viable. You can get tissue that is pre-marked, so it's much easier to tell uh, which way is right side up versus upside down. The downside to marking the tissue and having your tissue prepped um, by the eye bank or, or outside the primary uh, eye institute immediately before surgery is that the tissue tends to be manipulated more. And if it's manipulated more, then my opinion is that the cells uh, are potentially more damaged and less healthy. And then, um, in general, the patient has a graft that is not as healthy as we would like it to be. Now that we've got our graft in the appropriate kind of dual scroll configuration, we use a, a handheld slit beam to determine the orientation of the endothelial graft. And, and really what I'm looking for is for the scrolls of the graft to be scrolled upwards or anterior as opposed to scrolled posteriorly. And after doing this uh, a, a number of times, it becomes uh, somewhat easier to tell when the graft is in the proper orientation. You are looking for that slip beam to be reflecting off the anterior scroll uh, before it reflects off the posterior scroll of the graft that you've just placed in the eye. And so you can see that uh, fairly easily uh, in the operating room through the microscope, although it's somewhat much more difficult uh, to see here on this video. But again, you're looking for the slip beam to reflect off the anterior scrolls uh, of the cornea uh, the implanted cornea before it reflects off the posterior scroll of the cornea. And if it does that, then it is in the proper orientation. Cells are uh, the appropriate side up and then the graft uh, can be further positioned as opposed to having to flip it over in order to uh, get it to be in the proper position. So now that we know that this graft is, is appropriately positioned, we'll try and center it a little better and then we will use uh, some an, an injection of a small amount, a very small amount of air placed under the graft uh, to hold it in position uh, while we move it further. Okay, It's somewhat difficult to move the graft if there is no air in the anterior chamber holding it up um, because the graft does tend to then uh, just scroll more easily. So here is our uh, needle with the air on it. We'll inject a very small amount of air centrally there. That helps to unfold the graft and it helps to hold it in place. The air basically pins the graft um, to the back of the host cornea. So it holds the, the donor cornea in position against the host cornea while we can further uh, move, move the graft and get it, it, it centered. We want it as centered as possible over the area of, of tissue that we removed from the host at the beginning of the case. Now that the graft is positioned, we can inflate the eye uh, completely uh, close to 100% uh, with air. We want to get as much air as possible in the anterior chamber, uh, but we want to keep the eye uh, somewhat physiologic pressure because we don't uh, want to uh, create a situation where the blood flow has been stopped to the optic nerve because there's too much pressure inside the eye. So now we've got our new graft in blue, which is centered uh, very well over the pupil. It's hard to see the pupil in this view, but we've got our graft centered over the pupil and we've got almost a complete air fill. And now we're working on getting uh, the appropriate uh, physiologic pressure of the eye so that there's enough pressure to hold the new graft in place, but not too much pressure uh, such that the patient uh, 
um, would not have any uh, vision because the pressure is too high for blood flow to the optic nerve because it's important to make sure that pressure is appropriate because we're going to leave the air in the eye for approximately 60 minutes and then we will let about 25 to 35 percent of the air out okay and that will allow fluid then to flow through that uh, peripheral iridotomy that create that we created with the uh, scissors earlier in the case that's going to allow good fluid flow from the posterior portion of the eye to the anterior portion of the eye here we are just checking the pressure and making sure that uh, it's appropriate and not not too high oftentimes we will ask the patient if they can see light uh, through that eye. They're not able to see clearly, but they can tell if there's light or no light. Uh, sometimes, uh, because of the amount of anesthesia they've gotten, they're not really able to tell accurately uh, whether that eye can see light. Now we give our subcontentival medications. And that's it. Our graft is in perfect position in the proper orientation. We will see this patient in an hour and uh, let some air out and then they'll uh, go home and be told to lay flat on their back as much as they can tonight.